second, but let's talk about filtering again really quickly. So hopefully people are trying to implement the filtering um, the way I described. And what I was looking for, I saw uh, a couple cases of it, is a filter takes a list and returns a list. And the list contains all the elements that met some sort of criterion. And I said do it with a for loop. So I saw some people with an initial list that's empty. They looped over the rows of classmates. If the role was equal to the role that the input um, the user inputted, then they appended that row to their results list. And then they passed that results list to a function that prints off a bunch of rows. And that works. Python has a built-in function called filter. And let's see how filter works. Filter is a function that takes two arguments. The first argument is a function or none. And the second argument is a sequence. So we talked about functions being first class objects. And among other things, that means you can pass functions to functions. That first function. Uh, is used to do the filtering. The description of the doc string is return those items of sequence for which function item is true. So you are going to pass a function that you're not calling. The built-in filter function will call your function that you passed for each item in the sequence. And your function should return either true or false if that item should be included in the output sequence. So let's try that a little bit. So I give myself a function f1. It takes an item. If the item is greater than 5, it returns true. Otherwise, it returns false. I made myself a sequence. It's number 0 through 9. And I filter passing my function. How do I pass a function to another function? What should I type now? f1. There's no special syntax. It's just a variable like anything else. And there's no indication when I'm passing it that it's some different kind of variable. No function pointers, nothing like that. This is just a variable. It happens to be a variable whose type is function. And notice, sequence is unmodified. Filter returns a new iterable. And it's all the items from the original sequence that met my function's condition, which was if they're greater than true. Um, and it said I can either pass a function or none. This is sometimes useful. Notice what it did to my sequence. Why did it do that? What's the logical condition that everything except for 0 meets? Truthiness. Yep. 0 is false-ish in a Boolean context and all other numbers. So if you have a list and you want to remove, say, blank strings from it, you can use the filter function with none. It'll remove anything that evaluates to false. Empty lists, empty dicks, blank strings, zero. So if we want to use the filter function to implement our filtering of our rows in our classmates.py, we have a little bit of a problem. We need to pass a function that's going to return true or false based on whether the row meets some criterion. What criterion is it that the row has to meet? Whether the row matches the user input. How do we get the, the row is passed by filter to our function? as an input argument, how do we get the user input into our function? Based on what you know now, you can't. 
but we could make the user input be a global argument, or at least in the containing namespace of our function. And then we'd be able to see it inside of our function. We don't want to assign to it. We don't need the globals keyword. We just want to look at its value. Um, and notice I said a second thing there. One peculiarity of function definitions uh, that we're going to get to later more extensively, but I'll just show you now. In Python, you can declare functions inside of functions, and they have access to their containing namespace. Again, lookup only by default. So it's not just um, the rule I explained earlier, which is we look for a variable in our local namespace, and then we look in the global namespace. x there on line 110 is not in the global namespace. It's in the local namespace of function foo. Function second has its own local namespace, which is blank. When we print x, we look for x in the local namespace of function second. It's not there. We look in all the containing namespaces, which is the local namespace of the containing function in this case, back out to the global namespace. And we actually find it on our way. Python 2 does not have fine-grained controls to, um, or fine-grained tools to let you control how these lookups are performed. It's either obey the default rules or use the global declaration, which forces you out to the outermost scope, not just the containing scope. Python 3 has a few more tools for um, managing your namespaces and how your namespaces are looked up. Up the stack. It, it, yeah, it pops the stack to the containing context. And we will use this fact to write some truly mind-blowing functions in a little while when we get the closures. For the moment, let's say we get some input as a global variable define a function that compares a row to a global variable and returns true or false. So your next uh, assignment has two variations on what you've been doing. So for classmates 8.py, if you've got your filter working, go ahead and re-implement it using the built-in filter function. That means you need to specify your filtering function. And we've kind of got the hint that we've talked about. You're probably going to just access the global namespace to look at the user input. And then the other thing that I'd like you to do is also take advantage of the first class nature of functions in Python. Yuli asked me a good question. She asked if Python has a case or switch statement. And your main um, program execution at this point probably looks something like this. You've got a main loop that's well true. It's printing out a menu. And you say, if answer is 5, else if answer is 1, else if answer is 2, else if answer is 3, else if answer is 4. Um, other languages have a switch or a case statement that says, hey, I'm going to um, do something conditionally based on a single piece of input. And here's all the different cases that it could be. Um, and also have some optimization techniques like fall through. Python doesn't have a switch or case statement. And the common Python idiom to handle this sort of thing, I want to select um, some code that runs along uh, with a value, would be to rewrite my menu as a data structure with user input pointing to code. So how about this? So I'll do it in the order I have it there. Hey, 
and I'll stop right now. So I don't have these functions implemented. But quit, for instance, Now I do. And what does my menu handling loop look like now? I can print the menu. I can ask for a selection. And I might even include the menu, um, the menu text in my data structure here in some way. And then I can say, if my answer is in menu, which means is it a valid key, then menu answer. What? Say again? Parentheses. Yeah, menu answer gives me a value. That value is a function. It's a variable. And I'm just calling it. And that replaces this if statement, replaces my if elif. And this might be called the strategy pattern. If you look at design patterns. Yeah, so this is what may hang you up. So what is menu? Menu is a dictionary right. whose keys are inputs that are menu choices right. and whose values are function names. Uh -huh. they're, fu they're variables whose type is function. So when I say menu answer here, that is accessing a value, and that value is a function. When I put open and close parentheses after it, I'm calling that function. Uh, you're calling it as a function. Yep. So if menu is if answer was five, this is saying menu five, which gets me this value. That value is a variable that points to a function, and I put parentheses after it to call it. Right. The parentheses are the operators to call a function. Okay. And the reason is when I define a function inside of a function, its name is put in the local namespace of the function. And so there's no way to get to it. Uh, there's no standard way to get to it. OK, so let me circulate again. Um, no super new concepts here. The filter built in, you're going to supply a function to pass to the filter built in. And then we'd also like to use function variables and a data structure to handle your menu selections.